Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. It's Captain Art from The Searcher. We're here to talk about uh, preparing for the up and coming season. Some bluefin tuna tackle tips and some rod and rail combos and some terminal tackle. We're going to spend a little time talking about knots. There's been questions from some of our customers about knots, so we're going to go over a few knots. Uh, we're going to talk about maintenance for your tackle, uh, how to reverse your spectra, which is a key thing to do after a couple of years. And uh, so we're just going to get started and we hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and we know that you have some time on your hands. And so this is a perfect time to maybe get your tackle out, you know, all your tackle. When was the last time you had all your tackle out? Maybe you back the car out of the garage and you lay all your rods and reels out on the garage floor and you can survey everything that you have and inspect your rods, check your reel seats, check all your guides, Maybe you're missing a tip, and this is a perfect time to do all that stuff in preparation for the up and, up and coming season. We got some hot news. Um, we brought the boat home from a natural history trip and arrived on Sunday morning. On Saturday morning, we were north of Isla Cedros, northern Baja Peninsula, and we saw several fathom meter marks of bluefin tuna in the 30 to 50 pound range. A boat the day before uh, saw fish up jumping around. Uh, there's that bluefin tuna that's right outside the Colonnette Shallow that other boats have been capitalizing on over the past month. And over this weekend, there was some private boats that caught fish up to 170 pounds. So there's just a ton of bluefin around and we're excited and we want to have you take the time to get your tackle ready for the up and coming season. Perfect time. We're sitting around um, looking for things to do and what better thing to do than get pumped up and fired up for our up and coming season. So, um, Let's start with some, some just basic rod and reel combos. If you're going on a three or a, or a day and a half to a, a three day trip, this is a, a light outfit with a, a Valiant uh, Accurate 700 Narrow two speed. It's got um, 80 pound braid on it. This is a seven foot rod that's good for live bait casting. And then a little heavier outfit, also a seven foot seeker rod with an, uh, an accurate Boss Series two speed. This is a 600. It's also got 80 pound braid on it. And you know, right before you go fishing, you can find out in real time what's biting and you can add a top shot at that time, uh, whether it be 30 pound test or 50 pound test. It depends on what's happening and what's biting, but you can wait until a couple days before, before you put your top shot on. And we're gonna go over uh, how to connect your braid to your, to your uh, mono or your fluorocarbon. So that's two rods for a day and a half trip. And um, if you're going on a three day trip or longer, this is a, a Seeker one by three 60 to 100 pound rail rod um, it's an osp and we have this pen fathom lever drag 60 it has uh, 80 pound test line and uh, 130 pound braid on it and um, this is something that if the 100 pounders are biting then you want to have one of these if you don't have these outfits and Maybe you don't have the budget available to uh, go out and purchase something like this. Then we have loaner tackle on board. And if you make prior arrangements uh, with Celia or Callie in the office when you make your reservation or pay your balance, uh, if you need 
loaner tackle we have some available for you to use. So these three rods right here would get you by on a day and a half trip up to a five day trip. Uh, we are very grateful to have great sponsors. Uh, we have Accurate Products, Seeker Rods, Pen Reels, Pen Rods. Um, we have Iserline for monofilament and braid. We have uh, Berkeley for fluorocarbon and braid. We have owner hooks. And um, some of these sponsors, we're very grateful to have a, a wonderful association with them. And, uh, you know, they provide us with this gear as loaner tackle so that A, you have the right gear to use on your trip. And B, you get to test out these outfits. And maybe if when your budget allows it, you can go out and purchase your own. Uh, Pen Fathoms are great reels. Uh, this is a 60. I mentioned that. This is a 60, so this is the heaviest one that they make. But they make them all the way down to, uh, I believe the number is 15, so that's a pretty small reel. Uh, we have 30s and 40s available uh, for 30 to 60 pound test, and then we have several of these uh, heavier rods for uh, heavier reels for uh, heavier fish and and heavier line. So that's uh, rod and reels, uh, hooks, live bait hooks. We have one oh circle hooks. Circle hooks are something that you need to have, um, especially if the fish are forty pounds or greater. Uh, if the fish are smaller than 40 pounds, then a, um, you know, a standard J hook. And it also depends on the size of the live bait. For decades now, we've had nice big uh, sardines in our tanks. And we're grateful to Irvingham Bait uh, Company for providing that for us. And so a, a 2-0 standard live bait hook. This is a 2.0 Gorilla owner um, and uh, we use owner hooks um, and then this is a uh, Mutu circle hook, a 1.0 and you want to have uh, an assortment of both circle hooks and J hooks uh, in your tackle box so that uh, depending upon the bait size, uh, depending upon uh, hook size for fish that are, are maybe a little skittish and they don't bite as well. Um, we saw that last year when they weren't biting as well, we needed to go down in hook size. So that's, uh, that's key to have an assortment of um, circle hooks and uh, J hooks. We have a question. Why do you need circle hooks? Well, circle hooks, um, the, uh, the premise for circle hooks are fish bigger than 40 pounds. Uh, they have teeth. And so there's an abrasion thing. If you use a standard J hook, uh, then the hook gets embedded in the fish further down in its mouth or its throat. And so your line is rubbing on the teeth. And so you can lose your fish by uh, basically getting bit off if you use a J hook with those bigger fish. A circle hook, if your drag is set correctly, what happens is the the hook gets drug out and it actually hooks right in the corner of the fish's mouth. And so then there is no abrasion. Uh, the hook is in the corner of the fish's mouth and so your monofilament doesn't get drugged back and forth across the fish's jaw and its teeth. And so then you take that abrasion getting bit off out of the equation. So that's why you need circle hooks. And that's for 40 pound fish or bigger. Uh, as a fish grows and gets bigger, the teeth get bigger. Um, 40 pound and smaller, um, the likelihood of losing your fish due to abrasion uh, is less. So that's why you need circle hooks. So um, remember now, fluorocarbon is something that you have to have. 
It's just part of the game now, and we're firm believers in fluorocarbon. So uh, remember, you want to have an assortment of fluorocarbon, and uh, you want to generally you want to match the size of the fluorocarbon with the size of the monofilament top shot that you have. So if you have 30 pound monofilament, you want 30 pound fluorocarbon. 40 pound monofilament, 40 pound fluorocarbon. And the reason for that is, generally, you're setting your drag for the size monofilament that you have. So if you were to say, well, I'm using 40 pound mono, but I'm not getting a bite, so I'm going to reduce the size of my fluorocarbon. So I'm going to put 25 pound fluorocarbon on and maybe I'll get a bite. Well, yeah, you're probably going to get a bite, but you're going to lose your fish because you probably, you should have your drag setting for 40 pound mono. And so 25 pound fluorocarbon isn't going to hold up to that drag setting. Now, you can adjust your drag to, for 25 pound, but you know, it's one of those things where if you match your fluorocarbon with your mono and you get a bite because you did bait selection at the, at the bait tank and you got a, a reaction bite uh, with 40 pound, uh, then your chances of landing the fish go up. I've got a question. What is your favorite knot to join monofilament to fluorocarbon? Monofilament to fluorocarbon. That's a great question. I'm going to grab a couple of colored strings here so that we can show everybody that. So, um, we tie a surgeon's knot, which is really simple. So you take the fluorocarbon and the monofilament and you make a loop and you cross it over and you're going to just tie three overhand knots. Once, twice, three times, and then remember now you got to wet that so that it it doesn't cause any friction when you when you uh, cinch it down and then you pull on either side and that is a surgeon's loop. I know that we had a question about a uni to uni and I know some of my colleagues like a uni to uni knot so I can show you that real quick. So you want to take your fluorocarbon and your monofilament and get about 12 inches on each side there. And so we're going to grab it in the middle and we're going to take our, our loop and go back up towards our thumb. I may not have enough with this size line, but you'll get the, the gist of it. So then we're going to pinch that. And then so around both the fluorocarbon and the main line. And it's five times. I don't have a long enough line to do that, but you'll get the gist because it's long. So we got three times. Okay. And then you're going to cinch that down by pulling on the, the tag line. And then you're going to turn it around and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take and make a loop and cross it over like so. So you have the main line and you have the fluorocarbon and then you're going to go around five times. And you're going to go around both lines, the main line, your mono, and your fluorocarbon and then you cinch it down together and you pull on either side and it, and you have a uni to uni knot and so you're you're uh, all this cinches down and so with this big line it makes it difficult to cinch everything down but you get the gist of it So, you need a uni. How long should that piece of fluorocarbon be? Your fluorocarbon, we'd like to see um, at least 36 inches, but you can go longer than that. Um, 
but the key is here's the thing with casting you want to have a um, here's an example so if your fluorocarbon is um, long like seven feet or longer than your floor the knot your connection from your mono to your fluorocarbon um, gets caught up in your guides when you're casting so if it's 36 to, to 48 inches depending upon the length of your rod um, then you it, uh, you don't get your um, connection caught in your guides when you're casting and if if you have 36 inches then once you catch a fish uh, you can retie a hook on and use the same piece of fluorocarbon fluorocarbon is kind of pricey so that way you can maximize the use of your of your fluorocarbon so surgeon's no, uh, knot surgeon's loop and uh, you need a uni connection um, um, Surgeon's knot for me is is easy. It's very fast and it, it's very strong and it's uh, it's simple to tie and uh, that's the one that I use. Your granddaughter. My granddaughter, Natalie. Yeah, we love you too. <laughs> that's special. They're in Oregon, hunkered down like the rest of us. I have a question too. Okay. Um, why is it better to have a top shot of mono with mono? Well, uh, monofilament gives you a little bit of stretch, whereas fluorocarbon, there isn't any stretch. So let's say it's blowing 15 knots and the boat's rolling around a little bit and you have a rail rod, um, then the monofilament gives you just a little bit of stretch. And so you're, um, you're less likely to break your fluorocarbon or pull a hook out with monofilament. Um, I can tell you my preference is to have about 100 feet to 150 feet of uh, mono. That way I have a little bit of stretch and it, you know, it, it's easier on the body to be honest with you. It's easier to have a little bit of stretch in your monofilament. Now some people don't care about that um, and that way they have less connections so they're tying their you know this is a this is a, a 25 yard well this is 100 yards so if you wanted to um you could take this whole 100 yard fluorocarbon and uh tie it onto your spectrum a spectra or your braid whichever braid you're using and so you would have a fluorocarbon top shot uh, some of the fluorocarbon comes in 25 yard packages. So you would have a 25 yard top shot. So then um, rather than having three connections, you have two. You have the connection from your braid to your fluorocarbon and then your fluorocarbon to your hook. So you have two connections. With monofilament, you have three connections. You have the braid to your mono is one connection and then you have your mono to your fluorocarbon as two connections and then to your hook as three connections so some people like to they feel like one less connection is better but personally i like a, a top shot on there so that um there's a little stretch there's a little give and so maybe you you know you don't pull as many hooks out uh, so that would be um the reason to have a top shot is a little bit of stretch. Um, so um, I know that most boats, all boats, uh, we have extra line on board. Iser Line provides us with line on some of the trips that they sponsor. You could come down with your line, uh, your reels all spooled up, and after the first day, then you could strip that line off of there that you came on board with, and then you you get a free re-spool of Iser line, which is it's an awesome deal. And that night, the crew can re-spool your your reels with uh, fresh line, and you know 
Line is a pretty inexpensive insurance policy that you're gonna, you know, raise your chances of landing something uh, on your trip. Like, for instance, if you're going, if you got all your tackle laid out on the garage floor and all your reels have monofilament on it from last year, then strip all that off and put fresh top so shots on before you come. It's very, very cheap insurance. If you had a good day and you caught uh, your limit of two bluefin that day, um, in preparation for the next day's fishing, your monofilament is stretched out and um, your fluorocarbon is stretched out from fighting those couple fish. And so why not start fresh the next day with fresh monofilament? It's cheap insurance. You're paying money to come on the trip and you don't want to use last year's monofilament because it's been in the garage, in the heat, and um, you know, maybe you had a snag uh, or a backlash last season and you wound that back on. So before you come on a, a trip for 2020 season, make sure that you have fresh line. And uh, I know that uh, all the boats have um, all the sizes of line on board so that you can um, get a top shot on it. Like I said, if you're on one of our Iserline sponsored trips, it won't be any charge. If you're not on an Iserline sponsored trip, then uh, we just charge it for the top shot. And it goes on your tab. So bluefin tuna, if you're an artificial lure uh, person, then these uh, cold snipers are um, a very effective artificial lure. This is a small one. This is 60 grams. They make them bigger and it's just a replica of a small bait fish. And so there's a couple ways to do that. You can cast it out and you can skip it across the surface by holding your tip in the air. That can be an effective way of, of catching yellowfin tuna and bluefin tuna. Or you can let it sink and they, they bite it on the sink. Uh, and then I guess a couple factors would be, um, you know, what size bait do we have in the tank? So you're, you're matching the size bait that we have in the tank. And um, weather. If it's windy, then you might need a heavier lure to cast out there. And then you got your flat falls butterflies that... Uh, Everybody should have there's glow in the darks and there's various colors that that have been effective and work and they come in various sizes um, You should have you know, maybe four or five flat falls and uh, You know, this is a this is a butterfly. It's a um, 200 gram they make 150 gram 250 gram and so if you have a, a variety like that then um, you you would match the weather conditions if it's windy um, then you want a heavier flat fall lure because the boat's drifting along with the wind and the current and so in order to get down to the fish uh, depending upon the depth of what the fish are at then you might want a heavier lure and they come <clears throat> with uh, sufficient hooks um, some of these have been re-rigged with bigger hooks and, and heavier line. Um, and you can talk to your tackle rep about that. Um, so this is something that you should have. And line class, you're using your heaviest line that you have, 80 to 100 pound. And uh, I don't have any leader material, but one thing, you could put 200 pound leader material three feet long with the with the proper crimp methods or a perfection loop um, in 200 pound mono so that uh, you take away the abrasion that we talked about earlier uh, if you know these we've seen these these lures get uh, swallowed inhaled by those bigger tuna and so the the 200 pound 
leader is key to getting success in landing one of those big tunas and you don't use your lose your $30 lure. So that's a tip from us. And everybody does that. This is a 250 gram lure. And I'm pretty sure that it's a glow in the dark. And you know, that's something that, that may happen on your three or four or five day trip. Well, it could happen on any trip up to eight days long if you're gonna, if you're gonna fish bluefin tuna at the beginning of the end or if you're offshore. Um, there's been a lot of fish caught at night and uh, so it's something that uh, you need to be, be prepared for as well as fishing at night, drifting with flat fall lures. It's something that's been very successful over the past uh, few years. There's a question about the smoothest knot to use that doesn't get hung up in the guides. Okay, so the Albright Special and a variation of that is the John Collins knot. And um, so we can, we can demonstrate that. So this is your mono. Uh, this is your mono. So we're going to make a loop in the mono. And uh, here's your braid. Your braid is going to come up, and then we're going to go. We're going to five times. So five times up, one, two, I need more slack here, three, I need a lot more slack, three, four, five, hold it at the top and then back down, one, two, three, four, five, and then back through the loop in the mono. And then you're gonna pull on the tag line and the main line to cinch it down. And it comes down. This is an exaggerated one, but you get, hopefully you get that. And I'll show you that again so that you get a, a knot that you can, you know, you can t cut your tag lines off very close. And this knot right here goes through your guides the best. It's a version of the Albright special. So let me do that again. So here's your mono or your fluorocarbon. You're going to go up through the loop. Give yourself plenty of slack here. And then we're going to go around going up once, twice, three, four, five, and then hold that up there. And then you're going to go back down towards the bottom of the loop. One, two, three, four, five, and then through the loop and then you're gonna pull on the tag line to cinch it down this is a better example than the first one and you can see that all the all the wraps are lined up where they should be and then you can take and cut your tag line off of your mono and the tag line off of your your um, braid and so that is a very strong knot it's proven and holds up uh, with very large fish and it's a pretty easy fast way of tying uh, a, con a connection from mono or fluorocarbon to braid pretty easy pretty fast and you know we talked about um you know having all this time on our hands these days and what better time to practice these knots 
you can take um, just a few minutes each day and then you'll become proficient in, in, uh, in tying these knots, all of these knots that we're suggesting. Surgeon's loop, uni to uni, uh, the John Collins, or it's a version of the Albright special. And uh, that way when you get on board, um, you practiced your knots and uh, you're ready to go. The other thing that I would suggest is, you know, if you don't, if you're not proficient in tying a knot, then, you know, one thing that we talk about all the time on, on the boats, on the searcher, when we're doing a seminar prior to getting to the fishing grounds, is the crew. The crew on board is a great source of information. We're doing this for a living. We do this every day. So we know what worked yesterday. We're, a lot of times we're, we're coming in on the day of your departure and we're offloading a group, we're offloading their fish we're going to go replenish the fuel supply and replenish the food supply and clean all the cabins and get fresh linens on there for you. We're going to come back to the dock and we're going to pick you up. And so we were out the day before and we know what works. And so talk to the crew. They can tie those knots for you. They can tell you how to hook a bait, all that stuff. It's, it's important to use the crew as a source of information. Can that same knot be used for mono to fluoro? Just did. Uh, I think it'd be tough to tie because, you know, with the braid, uh, the braid makes it easier to tie that knot. I don't think I would recommend, you could try it. I haven't done it before. You could try it, but a, a surgeon's loop or a surgeon's knot or a uni to uni would uh, would be the preferred knot to tie. What's your opinion of the glow in the dark lures? Do they work better than non glow? I've seen it both ways. I've seen customers with glow in the dark uh, lures at night at, get bites when guys that don't have glow-in-the-dark lures not get bites, and I've seen it the opposite way, where somebody that doesn't have a glow-in-the-dark that maybe made it to the correct depth or, you know, turned his handle on the way up a little faster than somebody that had a glow-in-the-dark. So I've seen it both ways. Uh, it's probably something that you should have in your tackle box. Um, and if there's, you know, somebody that's not using a glow-in-the-dark uh, lure is getting bites, then you just go over to that person and say, hey, how deep are you going and how fast are you turning the handle? And maybe you get a bite that way. For Colt Sniper or similar lures, do you recommend limiting them to a certain grade of tuna? I don't think so. I know that um, you know there was Colt snipers being used at Guadalupe Island last year and uh, those fish were up to a hundred pounds and Colt snipers they were biting them they were biting them so size of fish I don't think matters you know they you know um, I think that they they have uh, quality hooks in them and um, so I don't think that uh, size of fish really matters as far as cold snipers are concerned. You know, your connection and your drag setting and um, the knot that you're tying uh, would probably be more of a factor than limiting the size of fish for the size of lure or the cold sniper that you're using. So, um... Wait, I have one too. On. Okay, Callie. <laughs> For fly... Sorry, I'm like zoomed in. Okay. For fly lining, do you recommend star drag or lever drag? 
Um, either or, I you know, some people say that the star drags um, have a better uh, are smoother when you cast out, but you know, with the you know the small two speed reels, um, I, I'm I'm going with a two speed reel rather than a single speed reel, just because if you hook one of those bigger fish and you have a single speed reel, then um, you know your your chances of landing the fish aren't as great as if you have a two-speed reel, so a lever drag would be my preference. And how about a JT knot? JT knot, I'm not familiar with the JT knot. Sorry about that. Is it a floral to mono connection? Sorry, don't know the JT knot. No worries. Okay, so let's talk about a maintenance thing for your reels. So there's a couple ways to do this, and you're taking your reel that has braid on it, and maybe it's three or four years old or something like that. I mean, it lasts forever. I mean, that's one good thing about braid is that maybe forever it, it's not doesn't last forever but it it's durable it lasts a long time so um these uh swifty lime removers that you can put on a drill motor to make it a little easier and you have a cordless or a whatever So you're gonna take your reel and attach your braid to whatever you have. You could use a piece of dowel. You can improvise something, something that fits inside your chuck of your drill motor, and you're gonna um, you're gonna wind the spectra off of your reel onto this spool. Okay, and so when your reel is empty. Then you're gonna take another spool and you you do the same process. So you take another spool and put it in your drill motor and you wind the braid off of this off of this spool onto the second spool. With me so far, hopefully. And then the second spool is what you wind your braid back onto your reel. And so you're reversing your braid. And so what that does, you know, the first 150 yards of your braid has been out there in the elements, in the salt water, in the sun, and that sort of thing. And the bottom 150 yards is been on your spool of your reel and so it's fresh and it's um, unused and so by rotating your braid then you get the used portion on the bottom of your spool and the fresh portion of your braid on the top and so you're renewing basically you're renewing your braid on your reels by doing that so you have to do it twice. It's a little time consuming, but we got some time on our hands, so it could be a good thing to do. Uh, maybe you get your fishing buddy and he can hold the spool while you hand line, wind your spectra back on your, your reel um, with a little pressure, a little tension now, so that your, your braid, your spectra, whatever you're using, um, gets on your spool nice and tight so that you don't have that um, overlay happen after you uh, hook a fish. So rotate your spectra. It's a great time to do it while we have 
time on our hands. Uh, it's a little time consuming, especially if you got multiple reels, but you know, it's just a maintenance thing. It's something that uh, makes your, your, your spectra, your braid last longer. So it's a, it's basically it's a simple thing. Just takes a couple, couple of spools like I showed you um, and you're rotating your spectra and it can be a, just a good thing to do in general. Best way to secure the line to your spool? You know, a San Diego jam knot is the probably the the best way to um, tie your your uh, line to your spool. And we'll uh, show a San Diego jam knot. And Vince says to say, "What's up, Art?" Vince. Vince, what a, a joy he is to be around. He works at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. He's very, very helpful and supportive. And uh, uh, so what up, Vince? What's happening? So uh, here, we're just going to use this mug. So this is your spool of San Diego Jam Knot. Hopefully you can see this. So here's a San Diego jam knot that you're going to use for your spool. You're going to use it for your your uh, any hook that you're going to tie on. So we're going around our finger. Some more around our finger, and then we're going back down towards the spool or your hook. Just going to do this three times. You can do it six or seven times. And your tagline goes through the loop at the bottom. And then you're coming back up through the loop that was around your finger. Then you, you pull on the tagline a little bit to cinch it up here to the top. And then you pull on your main line. And that brings it down towards your spool or the eye in your hook, San Diego Jam Knot is a great way to go. And then, so that's for your spool. And while we're talking about tying to a hook, um, I think that for me personally, I need something a little more stable. So I'm gonna do it around, around one of these rods here. Is this okay? So, the knot that uh, I was taught, wow, 50 years ago? That's a little daunting, but, <clears throat> so, the improved flinch knot, really simple, six or seven times, go through the eye in there, and then you bring the the tagline back through the loop here. Whereas a regular cinch knot, you would just do that. But with an improved, you bring that, your tagline back through the loop that you made. And then you pull on the main line and that cinches it down to your hook. Improved clinch knot. It's not very pretty um, with this big line, but it cinches down. And then you cut your tagline off. Works good. It's fast, easy, and holds. Uh, if I'm fishing with 40 pound test or less, then uh, I'm using an improved clinch knot for live bait fishing. Is the San Diego jam knot also your favorite for tying hooks and lures to the end of your mono or fluoro? Yes, hooks and lures, and, and especially in heavier monofilament. If I'm, uh, if I'm tying a uh, flat fall on, or a cold sniper, or you know, a 6X Junior, or 
casting lure or whatever, I'm tying a San Diego jam knot. Without a doubt. The improved clinch knot for me is live bait fishing with a 2 0 hook and 25 pound test. Uh, it's strong and it works and it's fast. And uh, so, either or. I think that the San Diego jam, jam knot is probably the un universal knot that everybody ties. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is the John Collins knot a good option for to lead for leaders when casting irons or other metal jigs? It can be for your connection. That's where your top shot comes in, the length of your top shot comes in. Because um, when you're casting, you don't want to have that knot going through your guides come into play. So your top shot should be long enough so that, you know, your knot is, your connection, your John Collins or Albright special knot is still on your reel when you're, when you cast it out. Because then you don't have to worry about that going through your guides. So you would have a longer top shot. Okay, so um, I think there was a question about dropper loop. Yes. Dropper loops. Also, before we get crazy, um, what size lure and flat fall would you suggest to have? Well, like I mentioned, you know, these, they come in various sizes from 100 grams to 250 grams. And I guess you could look at the weather forecast before you went out. We use windy.com. It works really, really well. So you can see what the forecast is. And so <clears throat> if it's windy, then you need a heavier lure so that you can get to depth where the fish are. If it's windy and the boat's drifting along at a rapid rate and you're using a hundred gram, then maybe you don't get to the depth that the fish are at. So when we stop the boat, we have fish on the sonar, we have fish on the fathom meter, and it could be they're at um, 200 feet. And so, uh, you know, if, you have, if it's windy and you only brought a 100 gram flat fall, then maybe you're not getting all the way to 200 feet. So you need to have both. Uh, for the conditions and um, you know he it, it, if you don't want to bring if, if you just want to bring heavies then you know if it's calm then your 250 gram lure is going to make it to that depth and if it's windy then you have the right lure so maybe you're just going to focus on bringing heavier lures with you but that that's the factor is wind and conditions um, and being able to get down to the depth that the fish are hanging out. And sometimes it can be as much as 300 feet. Um, so if you only have a 100 gram lure, then uh, you're not gonna get to depth and so you're not gonna get a bite. So, dropper loop. I think there was a question for dropper loop. So a dropper loop, you need a 16 ounce torpedo sinker and you're gonna use your heaviest outfit that you have and you can use a, uh, this is a perfect example of a dropper loop. It's your rail rod for 100, you know, 60 pound tuna or more or it's your dropper loop outfit. And so there's, uh, couple different knots to tie for a dropper loop. And I'm gonna I'm gonna string this up here. While I'm stringing this up, I think that everybody knows that this is the searcher's 50th year in service. Five years as the Cape Polaris and then 45 years as the searcher. Lots of history, lots of fish on the deck over 50 years. 
I'm wearing one of the 50 year shirts that has uh, 50 years and the years on the back 1970 to 2020 and uh, you can talk to Celia or Callie about how to obtain one of those shirts they're pretty cool I eh? I was very impressed Callie designed the logo and so we want to give her props for coming up with the idea and uh, the original sketch so that we could get it to the graphic artist and then our silkscreen guy did a fantastic job and it's very clean and it's a great shirt it's a great thing to have how large do you like the dropper loop to be and how far above the sinker should your hook be when dropper loop fishing great question so your hook should be about 3 30 inches to 36 inches above your sinker how long i like a little longer one probably uh, 14 to 18 inches because then then you can use the San Diego jam knot if it's not long enough then okay, so you can tie a surgeon's loop like we talked about once your loop is twice three times and then you're gonna pull on either side and cinch that down. Need more, I gotta take a drink, I don't have much spit. Okay, and then with your hook, you're gonna tie a San Diego jam knot, double. And then your sinker's just going on the bottom. So your sinker goes on the bottom and uh, you can tie just a clinch knot or a San Diego jam knot on your sinker. And then you want a bigger hook too. Um, I thought I had some when we left the storage, but I failed to bring a hook, bigger hook. So you could have a uh, 6-0 to 8-0 hook. So there's your sinker. Maybe that's a little bit long. So the key is what you don't want your dropper loop to get tangled up with your sinker on the way down. So San Diego jam knot to tie that, and there's your sinker. And then above your sinker, you can tie an overhand knot. You know, 80 pound test. If you get stuck on the bottom, can be a bear to break off. So if you put that overhand knot in the main line, then you're gonna lose your sinker, but you're gonna get your hook back and you're not stuck on the bottom. So dropper loop fishing. We're going all the way to the bottom. As soon as the sinker hits the bottom, then we're putting our reel in gear and we're winding up like six or eight feet up off the bottom and then your drag's gotta be tight. And mono or fluoro for the dropper loop? Just mono, it's not a line class or line shy thing. You're fishing around structure on the bottom for yellowtail or grouper or, uh, and so uh, I wouldn't use fluoro, just tie it on your mono top shot. And then you're, you're leaving your reel in gear you don't want to be in free spool because you got structure down there. A lot of times when you're fishing the bottom, you're around structure. And so you want your drag set tight so that you can gain line with your two speed reel and get that fish up off the bottom. That first 30 feet is critical to gain line. If you are, uh, if your drag isn't set correctly, then that fish takes a run, takes line off of your spool, and you end up losing the fish because of the structure that they're hanging out on. 
And then as far as the weight size is concerned, generally 16 ounces is, is, is uh, big enough. If you go with 12 and there's a bunch of current, then you, you don't get to the bottom as quickly. Fish your reel in gear and turn the handle when you get a bite. When do you recommend switching into free spool? Switching into free spool? I don't recommend. You're, you're going into free spool to get to the bottom. Now, here's a tip for everybody is that you want to, you, you're fishing the bottom. The fish are close to the bottom. They're hanging out close to the bottom. So you can periodically, you can put your reel in free spool and drop down to the bottom and then put the reel in gear and wind up a few feet up off the bottom. So for instance, it's a little windy and um, the boat is in position over the structure. And as the boat swings one way, it swings over here to the right and your sinker's up off the bottom uh, and the depth changes over there a boat length of five fathoms, 30 feet or something like that. So as the boat swings, then you want to put your reel in free spool and go back down to the bottom because the fish are hanging out by the bottom. So you want to be by the bottom. So you periodically, you can change the depth of your bait by putting your reel in free spool and going to the bottom. So that's a dropper loop. Um, there's a, uh, there's another knot called the spider hitch. So here's your 24 inches and you wrap the line around your finger and you try and keep it in line here. So two, three times and then your loop goes back up through the, the twists, take the loop out, oh boy, that doesn't look very good, yeah, let me try that again, spider hitch. And we have a question about deckhand rods. Okay, let her rip, deckhand rods, so. sure I understand the question. We can get back to it. Yeah, we can get back to that. Deckhand and boat rods are, they're usually pretty trashed because we use them a lot. Spider hitch, same size loop, then you tie your San Diego jam knot with your hook and the double line. So a uh, surgeon's loop, a spider hitch. Um, there's one other way. We have to wrap it up. Oh, we have to wrap it up? One minute. Oh, wow. That went by fast. <laughs> well, let's talk about um, searcher sport fishing. Spider hitch, uh, surgeon's loop, excuse me, dropper loop. We covered uh, going fishing for bluefin tuna and we talked about live bait hooks and two-speed reels and lures and fluorocarbon and mono and all that stuff and you know we're getting ready to go fishing in June we hope you all are and we want to thank everybody for taking the time to tune in with us today and we hope to do it in the future so thank you very much searchersportfishing.com or call the girls at 619-226-2403. Thank you all. Thank you.